get answers and worry will vanish like a vapor. It's that simple. The cure for worry is an answer. Worry disappears the moment we see or strategize a solution. It happens at all levels. It happens every time to us. You know, something comes into your mind and you are immediately worried about it because sometimes what the response we give to what that comes into us most times is worry. Except a man that is already grounded in the knowledge of that particular environment or that particular question the situation poses. So worry disappears the moment we see or strategize the solution. This gives us a clue to handling our challenges. But again, this usually tends to failure at the long run. I'm sure you are already asking the why question. The why question might not look simple, but in the true fact, it's not. That is why we are looking at this at this particular time. Most people think true only the surface of their problems for a solution when you think through you will definitely get a way out at the moment but what makes a way out enduring or stand the test of time is the source of that same solution james chapter 3 verse 13 to 17 i quickly read from here the who is wise and understanding i'm reading the bsb version the variance of the bible who is wise and understanding among you let him show it by his good conduct by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom but if you harbor bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart do not boast in it or deny the truth such wisdom does not come from above but is earthly unspiritual demonic for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peace-loving, gentle, accommodating, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. This scripture reveals the two sides to everything done under the surface of the earth. That is why what motivates what we do our motivation sometimes you know comes from what we stand to get or what we can offer to our generations they are two parallel lines some people go into you know whether you are going to businesses you are going to politics you are going to even pastoring or in ministry what led you to it? you know your heart will remain in what led you there the irony is that what people outside see are contributions not the motive but god is not interested in that god is interested in why you are doing what you are doing so and god has also warned us by saying that we should not get carried away when we see people doing good doing good can come from different aspects it could be because of my selfish reasons and it could be because i truly want to contribute to the society so what makes what differentiates me and makes me stand well before god of course is the motive behind what i'm doing you know matthew chapter 7 look at verse 15 and verse 20, you can read that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to verse 20. Though these two motivations reveal, revealed by James 3, 13 to 17, bring solutions, only one can stand the test of time. And why? It's simple. Because of the source, that's God, who is also in charge of all things. He's also in charge because he rules and reigns in the affairs of men. So whether the challenge is in the office, whether the challenge is a national problem, whether the challenge is a family problem, God is involved. He's the one that rules and reigns in the affairs of men. So one, only one can stand, and that's the one that comes from God, no matter what it sounds like. Now, we need to understand that worry is thinking on problems, thinking about the problem, while meditation is thinking on the solution for me, I prefer to say dwelling on the word, dwelling on the word of God. However, dwelling on the word of God does not just fall on us. We must put ourselves in an environment that encourages this. And this is where prayer comes in. John chapter 14, I'll read verse 1, 16 and verse 18. Berean Study Bible. Verse 1 says, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me as well. Verse 16, And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate kjv says comforter to be with you forever the spirit of truth 
It is, this, the world cannot receive him because it neither sees him nor know him. But you do know him for he abides with you and will be in you. He will not leave you as orphan. I will come to you. This encourages dependence on Jesus for our lives, you know, our life challenges. And one of the ways we can show we truly depend on him is how often we call on him in prayers. Sometimes you I know people stay for days, for weeks, for even months until they face a problem, then they will remember there is a God that can actually bring the solution. So they visit God, you know, like only when there is a problem. Meanwhile, what God expects from us is a relationship, not even to visit, but to walk with Him. I've always prayed that the Spirit of the Lord will not just visit my life, but will remain in my life and abide and reside. I'm not talking about the indwell, I'm talking about, you know, the overflow that comes upon. The Bible says, out of my belly shall flow three parts of living waters. If I don't have the overflow, then nothing can come out of me. So that's why you see that prayer makes us sensitive to the beautiful Spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit, He is always speaking. But our worries do not make us hear him. When we pray and pray through, we receive the peace to open, you know, open to his counsel or advice on issues part time. And at this point, he leads us to scriptures that brings reassurance to our challenging, challenging situations. And when we dwell on these scriptures, we receive insight, which also leads to answers that takes or repels our worries. Now look at this. When these answers you receive from the Holy Spirit through the inside takes our worries away, it means we have just been cured of the sin. But there is a level God wants us to get to. Where what we have taken in, when our word level does not let worry perch on us, you know, like a bird perching on a tree, whatever the bird wants to do there, maybe, you know, put a nest cast a net or build a net on a particular tree. Every time the bird wants to go and rest, it goes to that nest. So what worry does to a lot of Christians, a lot of children of God, the fact that worry builds nests on them. And so every time worry is looking, looking for a place to go and rest, it goes to them. At the moment it rests upon them, before you know it, their sleep disappears, their prayer life disappears, their fellowship disappears, their relationship, even in their homes, even those that are married, disappears because worry has set in. And that's why you see that the level you get, the word level you get, will not let worry peck. So meaning that at that particular point, you have been vaccinated against worry. And that's what I mean by the vaccine against worry. The word level must be able to get to the point, the moment worry comes in, it does not stay. Because there is a particular scripture, the Holy Spirit will bring into your spirit at that instance that repels that. Whether I like it or not, the word of God is light. Worry is darkness. So wherever there is light, worry can never stay. If you get into a room, whether you have left that house for, for a year, for two years, for ten years, the moment you get into that house and you switch on the lights, no matter how long, that worry or darkness will disappear at instant. So it's the same answer to everything. Worry that have lasted for ten years, worry that have lasted for twenty years, worry that have lasted for one day, worry that have lasted for one minute, it's the same answer. Just switch on the light, the worry will disappear. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 7, BSB also says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledging, and He will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes, for fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It is indeed possible, brethren, to reign above principalities and powers, to reign above rulers of darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places and not to be a victim of bad policies maybe in your office in your environment in your nation when you are truly or the truth is you are present in that particular system when they bring out those policies it will not affect you those policies that will affect you god will not let it be established in that particular environment that's because of who god has made you Bible says he has made unto us kings and priests and by extension, wherever there is the word of the king, there is power that backs up the world. You cannot stay in that particular environment and allow those policies to reside or to rest where you are there. You are the light in that particular place. And until you switch on the light, every other person in that environment, they are all in troubles. God came down in Genesis chapter 1. He saw the darkness and God said, let there be light. You must speak light to every worry 
whether residing in you or residing around you. Because when people are troubled and they see that you are okay, they will extend the same, either by complaining or by nagging or by bringing words that will create fear in your heart. And that's why you see that you must take in the word that when they bring the worry, you can repel and even take worry out of them. Out of my belly shall flows rivers of living waters. Run to God, for the name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous run it into it and are saved. God bless you real good. The name is Udwag Afan.